everyone and and today i want to thank my learners for making uh teaching and learning easier with respect to we first having a hands on the videos and then meeting in person for lectures so far it's been a wonderful moment with um, differential equations i have it as the what have we done so far and a differential equation is that in one sector that caused um, or classifications of differential equations we classify that as type or that degree linearity and its homogeneity we also have another sector where we looked at solving first order differential equations we have several techniques the separable the linearity or the integrating factor we also had um homogeneous reducible to separable we had exact non-exact <coughs> We've also looked at a portion of it called um, solving higher order differential equation. And then we had two techniques, the method of undetermined coefficient and then that of variational parameters. We also had the root solution, so whether it's homogeneous or non-homogeneous, you know what to do. Now the next category, there are five categories we are going to look at here. Um, we have the Laplace transform. Now for today, um, or the next series of videos, we are going to look at systems. So this is my focus for the next couple of videos. Systems of differential equations. Let's look at the motivation for systems. Um, the whole idea for systems of equation is a way of solving so alpha as alternative to solving higher order differential equations do i have an alternative which is yes so if i have n order higher order differential equation i want to reduce this to some n number of systems so n systems so it's like i have a bigger umbrella here and i want to reduce it to several a breakdown of it and that is the system so n systems and order if I have n order I repeat again I can break it to n number of systems of first order differential equation so n first order differential equation we as if we are moving back to FOD okay so the next thing is why do I want to look at systems I'll quickly go through my slides here. Now the most prerequisite for this systems is you need to know what matrices are. You need to know eigenvalues. You need to know eigenvectors. And these are things I believe we've done in our calculus, so let's say algebra. So you take note of this. Now with the real life scenarios, they are most, uh, let me put this way most of our physical quantities are coupled they are together they are not singled out so example of these cases is um, compartment analysis <coughs> so if i want to look at real life analysis or application of this the first is compartmental models or analysis Example of this analysis, like what I have in my slide for the tank mixture. You can see there's a, a tank one flowing into a tank two, or tank two can also flow into a tank three, whatever mixture is going on. There's a flow from one component to the other component. You can also look at um, a case for SR models. If you want to model diseases, I have susceptible group moving into infected group moving into recovery group it can also have um exposure like it's it can easily move from recovery to susceptible or recovery to infected all these are compartmental analysis i can look at pollution in a pond or in a flow of of, of our crude oils and other stuff so if i can look at pollutant how this flows within a medium I can also look at um, the flow of drug in the body system. So it's like a flow rate. 
especially um, one application I know is an irregular heartbeat and then its treatment. We know we treat heartbeat with um, a medicine called lidocaine. If I know the amount of lidocaine in your blood stream, and I know the amount of the same drug in your body tissues. I can <clears throat> sorry, I can tell the maximum dosage for an adult or what to be appropriate for you to take if you have irregular heartbeat. And these are all models using the systems of equations. We can also look at another form of application, which is um, we can look at a spring mass. So I have um, some spring constant, a spring, and I have mass hanging on it. It can be a double mass and, and, and all sorts of um, combinations. And these are modeled by systems of equation. I can look at electrical flow. In electrical um, flow, I'm looking at a network of resistors, a network of, um, I think we have inductors, and then the current itself. So you can see in slide four, if you want to light a bulb, there are so many things connected together. And this can be modeled by the systems of equations. So the flow of current and resistors and all those things. I also want to talk about um, if I want to move in the finance, which is what my, I, I, I mostly work in, I can look at price and forecasting or forecast of price or price analysis. Let me put it that way. You know, in prices of assets, I need production, I need sales, I need the cost of um, prices, sorry, cost of production. And this will lead to the change in the prices. If I want to model the price and um, rate, I need all these things to come into play. Demand and supply. What else can we also consider? We can look at the new, new rent, sorry, new trend flow. New trend flow, it can be in an ecosystem. Examples like a food chain from one animal to the other, from a plant, from a tree, let me draw my tree, <laughs> to some animal, to another animal, to humans, and all that. If I want to model the ecology or the food chain process in a very, in a, in, in a simple ecosystem, it cannot be a single equation because of the dependencies in here. I can even look at biomass transfer in a forest or in a garden. Biomass is simply um, humus in the soil. You know, it, it, it's first moved from a living thing to to die off. So it becomes a dead plant. So a living plant to a dead plant, then to it decayed as humus. And all these channels cannot be modeled by a single equation. It can only be modeled by a system of differential equation. And so there's a physical um, systems you can think of. In the next video, I'm going to look at how these systems of equations are evolved from these scenarios.